Hello everyone, Dom here and in this video I'm going to show you a technique that will allow you to make pretty much everything super wide in Cubase and the best part is it's super easy to use. Let's get started. First of all, I want to tell you, if you don't know about this trick and you watch this video, there's no way back because you're gonna want to use it all the time. Let me play this track for you and then let's try and spread things out, make things super wide. Okay, we have this simple pop track. Now I want to make sure that the vocals have their space in the mix, they're in the center, and everything else is around the vocals and we get a lot of width, a lot of depth. Let me show you how we can do this. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to take care of my clap here. Let's have a listen. So this clap is nice, but it's very much in the center. So it will clash with all the elements that I have in the center and most importantly, the vocals. Also, it's kind of boring. It doesn't give me any sort of wideness. It's all in the center and I want to make it wider. So how can we do this? So let me introduce you to the Haas effect. This is a trick that has been used by many engineers. As far as I know, it's been used by Bruce Sweden uh, on the Michael Jackson records. If you've ever listened to these records, they're really wide. They have amazing elements that really pop out of the speakers. This is the technique that allows you to do this. So in order to do this in Cubase, you just need to open the stereo delay and you can just dial in the settings that I have right here. So let me play it with and without and I'm going to explain how this technique works. So that's the original clap. Massive, massive difference. This sounds like a pop record. This clap is spread in the panorama and it's very wide but why is it wide? Let me explain how this technique works. As you can see, the first line of the delay, delay number one, is all the way down. So essentially, it's just playing the dry signal. Now, the second line of the delay, which is the only delay that we're hearing using this plugin, has a 25 millisecond of delay. Okay, and it's panned all the way to the right. Now, what happens here? The original signal is panned all the way to the left and the delayed signal by 25 milliseconds is panned all the way to the right. So what do we do? Basically, we trick our brains into thinking that this sound is super wide, where in actual fact, we're just delaying the right channel by 25 milliseconds. Now, the amount of time that you can use for this delay can range from 5 milliseconds for very short sounds up to 40 milliseconds. If you go over 40, it's going to sound like a delay. Your brain will understand, okay, this sound is a little bit late, so it's a delay. So let's try it and let's see how it sounds actually. See? Now it's very distinct, 50 milliseconds, it sounds like a delay. I'm gonna keep it at 25. And that sounds really nice and wide. So all of a sudden, we took this clap out of the mid signal and we sent it to the side signal. So now if I play it in the track, you will hear a very big difference. which also means more excitement and more space for my vocals. Great. Now let's see how else we can use this effect to our advantage. Let's play these two basses. I have an 808 sub bass and I also have a bass layer using Retrolog. Let's have a listen. So that's just a sub. And that's okay, I mean, I've made sure that I added a little bit of a 
high pass filter on my layer base, but both these sounds are in the center. They occupy a lot of the same frequencies and the layer doesn't really stand out, which is what I want in this case. So let's have a listen. And as you can see, I also have supervision here. We can check out the panorama and you will see that the white base layer, which is not white yet, is completely mono. Which sounds a little bit narrow, it sounds a little bit nasal with the sub bass there. Now, let's try and use the same technique, exactly the same settings, on this layer bass. So, obviously, we can see right here in the panorama meter in supervision that now the wide bass layer is actually very, very wide. And not only it's wide, but it sounds more clear, it's more pronounced, it will cut through the mix a lot better, but we'll still keep our sub right there in the center because we want our subs to be in the center. So, let's have a listen in the context of the mix. much, much better, and especially with pop music, this trick is really, really invaluable. I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this synth here, which is probably going to be in the way of my vocals. Let's have a listen. Just spread it a little bit. And maybe on this piano as well. Let's have a listen. Maybe I get, well, 28, this one. So you can hear the piano now sounds wider it sounds like it's spread, and again, it will leave a lot of space for the vocals because it's an instrument that has a lot of mid-range. So, now, you might be wondering, okay, but Dom, these are all stereo sounds and I can pan them left and right and the stereo delay will actually work because it's a stereo channel. What happens with the guitar, for example, that's mono, like this teller here? Now, if you want to treat like a lead vocal or you want to treat like a mono source with this technique, then all you need to do is just send it to a group channel that's stereo, like what I've done here, and you can do exactly the same thing. Let's have a listen. And I've done exactly the same thing with this nylon guitar here. So I've sent it here to a stereo group, and now I can apply this technique. Okay, at this stage I have to say, use this with caution. Don't use this technique on every channel, because then your mix will sound a little bit unbalanced, it will sound weird, you might have face issues. Just be careful, add it only to the elements of the mix that you know you want them to be completely wide and you want to use them more for the side information instead of the mid information. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to play this track with the effects on for every channel and then off so we can hear the difference that it will make. So let's have a listen. So as you can hear, massive difference when it comes to width, when it comes to depth, when it comes to the 3D quality of the mix. 
Maybe I wouldn't apply it to all these tracks that I showed you here, so I would pick and choose the right elements to use it on. But nevertheless, this is a really powerful technique and the fact that you can do this with a simple plugin like the stereo delay in Cubase, that's insane. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that now you know how to make even a mono sound super wide in Cubase and I hope you have loads of fun using this technique. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.